Uh, as alaykum Sayyidi. Uh, how do we know if we learned our first name? A name came to me while I was praying and my brother called me the same name the same day. It's strangely fitting. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah inshaAllah. And someone else also asked Ra- Write it down, just write it down and, and keep it for yourself and uh, keep it written down in a book for yourself to understand yourself. This section of the book is for me to know myself, what are my characters, what are my bad characters, how am I coming against those bad characteristics. And then this is possibly a, a name that's of importance to me and keep making your meditation and tafakkur and, and uh, ask for more understanding on it, inshaAllah. <laughs> uh, Sayyidi, how exactly to make intention to do mawlid with intention of Shaykh Abdullah Faiz al-Daghistani as you mentioned yesterday, how exactly to do that for a beginner? Yeah again there is no exact, it's exactly what we taught. So any Naqshbandi who understood and just heard what we said that, that from the reality Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani make intention to do Mawlid al Nabi and you just recite that, Ya Rabbi I'm making intention for Mawlid al Nabi under the order of Ma Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, Sultan Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani and all Mashaykh of the tariqah and we're making Mawlid. But that was not only you make the mawlid but attend the shaykh's mawlid and that's why three days a week the mawlid is being broadcast. So three days a week with the a shaykh's connection is making intention under that intention. So that's to show them the importance of the power of that mafil that's going out and what type of dress and barakah is dressing that association. And then when they make the, the mawlids in person then alhamdulillah it's, a, in, in, it's attendance through the broadcast and through physicality is an immense blessing. And when they're travelling and going around and, and people say, ah, I'm busy right now I can't you know host the mawlid, they don't understand what that was that they turned down. So that's for the understanding of the teaching. And when somebody else is watching and, and having the broadcast in their home, alhamdulillah. And then if they want to have a, a mawlid at their home with their children and relatives alhamdulillah. But that one they're, they're less uh, interested in teaching about because anytime you open your home to an association and your shaykh is not there, you're opening your house to an abode of fitna. Because we're you know, 30 years into this game we understand what happens. As soon as you open your house and you know five people come or maybe ten people come, yeah, somebody's going to show up and he's going to want to teach, he's going to want to talk, he's going to want to redirect everybody in a different direction and then you have a lot of problems on how to control that. That's why the, the easiest association just you put your children and loved ones where you just play the mawlid, recite some of the mawlids that you want and no problem. And the easiest is then just turn on the live and attend the majlis live. But once you do something and few people show up in days of where there's no mask and before you know it somebody will try to speak and somebody will try to sort of hijack the association and becomes a different issue and different difficulty inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Beloved Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah If we are having difficulty with our health and it stops us from doing meditation, what can we do to overcome this and keep doing what is needed for the soul? Ya Walaykum As Salaam, I think you have to email us at helpme at nurmuhammad.com because I can't think of anything offhand that would stop you from meditation because it's the least amount of activity. You're just sitting and connecting your heart and you're, you're, if you're not healthy you're probably sitting all the time. So it's a matter of, of using that time and the effort that you, you have into connecting your heart, doing your zikr and learning how to do your khafi zikr, silent zikr and, and asking for an energy and support and that's even beneficial for your health and to improve the energy that coming upon the body to assist it in its healing inshaAllah. But if it's specifically something in your health then you have to email and, and we try to figure that out at that time inshaAllah. 
Okay. Yeah, sorry. Okay, um, what, is the what is the importance of water? What is the reality behind feeling tremendous energy and phase after drinking water sometimes? Alhamdulillah. Yeah, a lot of blessings on water that Allah on my, that my throne is upon the water. It's an angelic reality of uh, stable energy and has a tremendous uh, might and izza in, in that reality. And my is meem and alif. And then Allah described that my throne is upon this my. So, means that there must be an immense power and uh, immense reality in water. And when water comes into insan, it's an angelic force. If they do it with recitations and with the making their prayers, it's an angelic force that comes within their body. Their zikr, their meditation again then is geared towards why the meditation and all the practices of meditation is then to understand that 70% of your body is water. So when you're doing your meditation, doing your zikr, you're changing the power of that water within your being. So that shaitan doesn't hijack that blood and that your zikr and your energy begin to energize that blood. And then that becomes the energy that's going to the heart, from the heart go to the breath, from the breath goes to all of the organs. Means everything going to be dressed by the reality of that blood and the condition and the purity of the heart. So it plays an immense importance in the reality of insan. The water on the outside has an angelic force in which to burn away shayateen on the outside. Once they understood that and brought the water inside, then they have the ability to burn the shaitan on the inside because their purity of their water, the du'a upon the water, it comes in with a divine fire in which to burn away shayateen. And then their zikr and their meditation energizes all of their blood again which is 70% water of their body. So again all of that is the inner reality of how to make wudu and how to cleanse and, and how to, to bring that energy out. So inshaAllah has a, it's a deep reality from our elements, water has an immense importance. And then we have our, our earthly element and the importance of that earth, we have the air and the breath that Allah gave to us and our fiery nature. So understanding these elements then is important in tariqah and the way towards marifah. That's why you can put out fire with earth and with water. And that's why Prophet brought for us wudu or tayyamu because the clean soil, sand or the moor that we use for, for, for our practices, that clean soil and sand you can make wudu and the clay and the sand burns away the shayateen, stops the fire of shaitan as well as the power that Allah put within mai. And the mai pulls away that. So when they balance their earthly reality and they understood on how to ignite the water of their reality, they're able to contain the fire that is coming upon them and not to be narani, not to be fiery and angry. Because these are the things that bring down your fire. As a result of controlling their fire reality then Allah gives power to their breath. Because then when they're breathing and they have control of their, their physical energy, they have control of the water within their reality, Allah then ignites their breathing with a divine nafasul rahmah. Their breath becomes of a divine qudra and power as they're breathing. And that becomes the great mizan, the scale that is able to balance. And sun is, is the great scale of Allah that their clay, they can balance with their clay the fire and the water of their reality. So their clay form can balance that. Where Allah when He made the jinn and the jinn thought that they were very powerful and shaitan came against this creation, he lacked the understanding of what type of reality Allah would put into this clay form. That it wasn't just clay that you can come and go out of it, 
but it was a mizan and a scale because only the clay had an element in which to hold water. Because as soon as you put water on clay, angelic things grow. That's why when you put water on soil, flowers and, and things come to life. So as soon as water touches this creation everything comes to life with them. At the same time because of that creation it can also contain the fire of shaitan and the jinn element within insan and that he didn't understand because his nature was just fire. He can't take water because water will extinguish him. So the great creation of Allah is insan. That if they reach towards that mizan and the scale where they hold fire in one hand and hold water in another hand, Allah would breathe onto him from his spirit in which they are far more powerful than these shaitans and these jinn. And shaitan couldn't see that because they have the jinn element within them, they have angelic elements within them and they have the breath of Allah As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi I will be working with the mentally ill as part of my job. What is the easiest way for me to protect myself from negative energies and entities? <coughs> wa Alaikum As Salaam, that's a difficult job, especially in difficult times because there's too many people with uh, very, very negative energies attacking them. And if you could visualize an energy it's like wound up too much, you take a rubber band and wind it a thousand times it's about to snap and as soon as you let it go start twirling. The energy on people is like that, that they are so wound up, so much in difficulty that when you're near them that energy will reflect onto the people. So psychiatrists, psychologists they have the highest suicide rate because they don't understand energy and when they're dealing with these energies they're going home and killing themselves because they don't understand how energy dress them, depression dress them, anxiety dress them, all of these characteristics that is upon that servant is dressing that one trying to heal them. So the tariqah comes and teaches one you have to be very careful and two you have to keep a, a certain amount of distance always than your energy practices. You have to keep your wudu, have to keep your taweez, have to keep your salah, have to keep all your practices and definitely when you go home you wash so that to wash away any type of negativity that has come upon you and make a strong, strong connection with the shaykh so that you're, you have a, a fayaz and an energy sort of dressing upon the servant inshaAllah. Uh, dear Sayyidi, As Salaamu Alaikum Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, What is the significance of the 15th of Ramadan with regards to the awliya? 15th of Ramadan inshaAllah the birthday of Imam Al Hasan Al Salaam Ibn Ali Abu Muhammad Al Mushtaba that we talked from just Sifat al-Rahman when Allah creating these lights and the reality of all lights in the form of Sayyidina Muhammad is Qur'at al-Ayni, Jatt al-Hasani wa al-Husayni that the beatific light that makes the eyes of Sayyidina Muhammad one of them is the light of Imam al-Hasan and Allah dressed that light with the Sifat of ar-Rahman. So imagine all the realities of Sifat ar-Rahman and that is a dress on the light of the soul of Imam al-Hasan And that's why Allah implored us to have and ask for, for dunya hasanat. And when we ask for dunya hasanat means then we want from this light of Sifat ar-Rahman, we want from the light of uh, Prophet and the light of Imam al Hasan that Prophet has partitioned of him his, his reality of insan al kamil to the reality of his grandchild Imam al Hasan. Al -Salam. That is of an immense reality of, of that dress, that light, that blessing that Allah perfect our light in dunya 
and the other eye for Imam al Hussein is salam under Sifat al Rahim. Allah gave the secret when say, Ya Rahman, by the haqq and the reality of what Al Rahman is dressing in the reality of Imam al Hasan's soul that Allah had created. And Allah created these anciently. It does, that's why the malakut to dunya people doesn't make sense. They think that something in dunya then Allah will name it. Allah created it before He made the form. In the world of light when Allah established what this light would be, all of these realities were already established and Allah named them based on what the secret of it is supposed to be. And then later when it came to earth then people were made aware and certain people were made aware of, of the physical reality of this creation that Allah has made. Which again is immense, Ya Hanan, Ya Hanan, when we're singing Ya Hanan, Ya Hanan, Ya Hanan, Bi Zuhoor Nabi Ahmad means how these awliyaullah are singing these songs that, that Ya Hanan means everybody be happy, everybody be happy because you don't understand what this means when Allah sent the zuhoor and the presence of Nabi Ahmad from that reality of the ocean of souls that we have no understanding, what Allah sent into this physical world called Muhammad So their, their nuts are all about the reality of the sh these salawats and all of these are immense reality that people be happy, be happy because Allah sent an immense reality upon this earth on a form that we know as Sayyidina Muhammad who fi sama is Nabi Ahmad So that's immense that that immense light they were astonished that you're going to be sent onto this earth. So all of these are just immense realities from the world of, of Malakut, the world of light and shaykh. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.